Alright, I'm back again. This time, another battery storage review. I guess that you'd call it a battery storage review. It's the Stanley Power Box. I'm just kidding, it's just a toolbox. <laughs> Anyway, I just turned it into a portable power. The interesting thing about my portable power box is that it's a 42 volt portable power box. And then I use a golf cart. Step down. And it's really, it's a 36 volt, <laughs> it's a 36 volt battery and it's just charged basically I didn't actually take a, uh, a reading on this battery before I started using it but it's still pretty close to full charge I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'd have to redo this whole test all over again to verify and start with the battery completely charged known to be charged but because I, I think my son actually used this battery in a scooter and then it wasn't charged and you know, I threw it in this power box. <laughs> anyway, this is how his scooter comes right here. That's the leads for his scooter. I haven't changed anything about it. And then it comes with this adapter so that you can charge it off the bike out of the scooter. So I got another one of these ends. It's like an RCA microphone jack. And I soldered my wires in. And how the converter works is this is a 120 watt converter. It's good for 10 amps. And here's your power side. And it's real simple. You just run your power in. And then you get 12 volt up. And it doesn't even get hot. I've, I've actually got to wait till you hear what I, you probably won't believe me. You'll be like, yeah, he's freaking making it up. <laughs> well, I'm not. So, anyway, um, I don't use, I didn't use any terminal connectors. I just, uh, I'm a solder kind of guy. I like solder and stuff. So, well, you can't take that apart easily. Yes, I can. <laughs> My solder gun heats up in 30 seconds. I can take all the wires out of this thing in a matter of minutes <laughs> if I want to. Anyway, I could have probably simplified this and just, you know, ran one connector to the next. But anyway, what I got in here is I got uh, your basic USB 5 amp or 2 amp, 2.1 amp, 5 volts, and then a 1 amp, 5 volts, and then a regular 12 volt, and then I got two more 12 volts on the side. And then I'm using the 36 volt <laughs> scooter battery, which is a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's very stable, it has a battery management system built in, so it's not even fused on the 36 volt side, it's only fused on the 12 volt side for 10 amps, because that's what the converter is rated at, so that's what I have, uh, have it fused for, so that I don't overload the converter, because this, this can do 40 amps continuous and 100 amp bursts, so <laughs> I don't think we're going to hurt it. And uh, so this is 576 watt hours of juice. Focus your piece of crap. Uh, this is just the charger for the battery. So like if you're in a remote location or whatever and you can find a, a wall out, <laughs> well, then we could charge it up in about six or eight hours. This is a 36 volt, two amp charger. So it takes like six or eight hours from dead. So anyway, this is the state of the battery. It's, it's at 43.1. Uh, my son, I think he, rode the bike, rode his scooter for at least a few miles the other day because he had to go mow a couple of yards and he uses the scooter to get to the yards to mow them because he doesn't like pedaling to work. Who would? And I got I got this 12 volt camp fan here. Um, I've been running this 12 volt cam fan on this system for 24 hours. <laughs> I just shut it off so that I could unhook and do a voltage test because yeah, I didn't put a voltage meter in, which I should have, I guess. <laughs> I did put a battery meter in. So this this measures the 36 volt battery. I'll show that in a minute uh, when I kick back on the system. 
So I've charged the cell phone on this. A uh, couple cell phones at two amps, quick, ch fast charge. Uh, and this fan has been running on the low setting for 24 hours. And the main battery is still sitting at 43.2 volts. It's pretty awesome. Uh, which that's this real world application because you use it for actual camping, and these fans are in the tent or you know, or in the car. If it's car camping, you have this running in the car. You could actually plug it in, in the car. It's very low draw, I guess. Um, I try to find some information on them, uh, but it's pretty vague. They they work great. These little fan. I got two of them. And I'm about to plug that one in and, and crank this baby back up and keep running it <laughs> because the battery is showing no signs of letting up. And this uh, never gets warm to the touch. Even charging a couple phones and running that fan at the same time, this thing is seems rock solid. So anyway, I might set the phone down for a second because I have to plug this back into that. So... So there's no edit in there. Anyway, get that locked in. So that's that just locks in. So that's nice, that's nice connection. So nothing's gonna short out. It's on. Of course, I've got to do it. Do that. I'm gonna get this other fan going. Uh, power to the fan. Nope, on this side. I'm just going to do on low on this fan too. Now I'm going to run both fans. These little fans move some air too. You can see the. You can see the curtains moving around down there. I'm both running off that, and yeah, once the box is powered up, this is the 36 volt fuel indicator, uh, which going by that number that you just saw my voltmeter, uh, it's going to be a while before that starts actually even moving because it doesn't even start measuring until it falls below 37 volts. So once it falls below 37 volts, that should start moving. But as you can see on my voltmeter, that's gonna be a while. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna run these babies. The idea we're gonna be camping for a week, so you know we want to be ideally we want to have our fans on every night. My son, he's I gotta have a fan, Dad. <laughs> what am I gonna do, do without my fan on the camping trip? Oh, I'm not gonna be able to sleep. Well, I got you covered, buddy. Got Dad's got you covered. Because so far, I know we can definitely run that for three nights at eight hours a night at 24 hours. So, there should be no problem. This thing will probably last all week. You'll be able to charge a couple phones, and run fans every night, one or two fans even. I got a little light in there that I got right in the box here. It's down in there. It's a little LED cigarette lighter light. You can plug that in and have light inside the tent. And it has a long cord so we can just hang it up in top, top of the tent. It's a big giant tent, so. Anyway, we're gonna have power, power. I've uh, I've reviewed another solar battery bank in the in the past. I have an interest in electric stuff. I have e-bikes, computers, I built computers and now I built this stupid thing and yeah. I can clean up the wiring. I kind of just hastily tossed it together. I ordered all the bits. We already had the battery on hand. Uh, and then the, all the stuff for the box cost about 70 bucks. With the with these little, this, uh, and these two things. Uh, this was like $14. And I could have probably went with a 250 or even a 350 watt converter with this battery. But, you know, whatever. This is, you know, we're not, we're not trying to take 
you know, house power with us camping. Uh, it's just nice to have, be able to be comfortable and, you know, maybe charge up the electronic devices for, you know, taking pictures and little videos and stuff. So, yeah, I will, I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to run this for as long as possible and see if I can get that needle to start moving because it's uh, 24 hours with one fan. Now they're both going. It's pretty awesome. My wife thinks it's pretty awesome anyway. All right.